Hey guys, it's May May, and oh my goodness, I'm going to play with a bunch of like unopened stuff. Not necessarily new stuff. Like these things have been in the store for a while, but this is a brand new stamp set. You would have seen it already because it would have released before this video goes up. But this is a set that we did in collaboration with Jennifer, Genevieve Designs. If you don't know Jennifer, you need to go check out her channel. I'll be sure to link it in the description below. This stamp set is perfect for your mini albums, and I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to use it in this one. So, the album I'm using, the 49th and Market, I'm all about these pre-made albums lately. I'm telling y'all, they make life easy, and I'm going to use the Country Fair. I know it's not Christmas, but I needed a tiny break, and I wanted to play with some stuff I didn't get to play with because it came in right around the time of um, Christmas in July, so we're going to play. So, this album really quick, this is the Portrait Layout album. This comes in a landscape also. I'll have them linked for you. Look how they pack it with all this packaging. You could probably use this for something. I would save that for something else and see what you can do. But check this out. It comes like this and all we have to do is decorate. I just love that. I love not having to, to assemble an album. I know how to assemble them, but I like this better. All right, let's do some measuring. I, like I tell you all the time, when you get one of these albums home, measure it for yourself. These are, you know, they're manufactured, but they can sometimes be a little off. So mine is six and a half by eight and a half. So I'm going to write that down so I can remember that. I'm just going to get a post-it note for that. So I wrote down the cover and the back are six and a half by eight and a half. I'm going to write down the spine. This way I don't have to keep going back to it with my roller. So two inches by eight and a half. So let's write that down. I find that this makes the process go even quicker. Two by eight and a half. And I'm going to measure the pages also. Again, just to save me time. This guy should be the same as the cover because the way they have it laid out. Oh, it's a little bit shy. So this is six and a quarter by eight and a half. So I'm glad I looked at that. So I'm gonna do the inside cover is 6.25 by 8.5. And then let's do the pages. Now there's six and one eighth, but to be safe, I'm going to call it six. That's what we're going to work off of. I think it'll be fine. And the length of these guys is eight and a quarter. I told you before, eight inches are not easily seen. I don't know. Eighth inches are pretty easily seen. Sixteenths are not. But I'm still not going to let that eighth inch get to me. I'm going to skip it. All right. So I know the size of these, all of these, and I got the size of the back. So now we can find paper. To be safe, I always like to cut out my front cover first. And I think this little seam would be so pretty on the front cover. So I'm going to start with it. So I need to cut it down to six and a quarter. The reason is I want to have that quarter of an inch gap around it, or that quarter of an inch kind of mat area. So I'm going to cut that down. I'm going to cut off my little branding strip here. Put that aside. And then I need to cut this guy down to eight and a quarter. Writing down the measurements really, really helps. And I want to cut it from the bottom because I want my seam to show. So I'm going to go eight and a quarter. And look, I get almost that entire seam. Look how cute that is. And we can do a lot with that. We can decorate it. We can lay stuff on top. We can do all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm going to keep cutting in just a second, but I want to show you how this is going to look and what I mean by that quarter of an inch that I'm saving. See how I'm, it's kind of sunk in and I've got the edge showing? That's what I want. Look how cute that is. That is adorable. Okay, let's do the spine and the back. So I get two pages of this in the album. And look, this is my cover page, okay? This is my spine. I just went right here to this so it'll wrap around. And now what I'm going to do is cut from here in to get the back. And it will have some of the coop in it, but that's okay. I think it'll be cute and it'll look like it's kind of wrapping around. So we're going to take this guy. We're going to put him in our trimmer. And we need to cut it down to six and a quarter. Just paying attention to what, what I'm cutting where and when. So six and a quarter on that one. And then I'm going to cut it to eight and a quarter. But let's cut off our little branding strip. Then we want to cut from the bottom up because that's where my scene is living. And now we should have what kind of looks like a scene that wraps around our little book. So I'll show you. It won't be perfect because of the way the paper lays out. But I've got this on the front. This will be the spine. So we'll get the little chicken twice. But it'll be super cute like that. I think that is adorable. Sort of just kind of wrap around. Now, something I want to do before I forget, because I always forget, is I want to ink everything. So because this is something I always forget, I'm going to let it be like step one. And I'm going to run around and ink this entire album. Now, I'm probably going to be sad when I get done because it's going to be a lot of work. But I think it'll be pretty. I think it'll look good. And I think it'll help 
with the little vintage look I'm going for. And I'm gonna try to remember to ink everything, but I'm the worst. Now, do you see how messy I'm doing this? I'm kind of doing that on purpose and I don't mind it. There are ways to not be so messy. I'm being very messy, but I want that messy, choppy look that kind of comes from just wrinkled up aged paper, even though this isn't wrinkled at all. You see that? And I'll show you, um, let me do this side and I'll show you why I'm doing it like this. Also, you don't have to go very far in because we only saved, you know, an eighth of an inch to show from our paper. All right, so there's that. Let me show you by bringing our cover over. Because this is farmy, right? It's very farmy. And I want it to look, see how it looks kind of almost cloudy? See how messy that looks? I don't know if you can really tell, but here's a good spot at the top. See how the cloud almost continues to the side? And that's what I'm going for. Messy, sloppy. It won't look good at first, but it will when we're done. So I've done a lot of inking all inside, and you'll see that as we go. I also inked all of the pages I'm going to be using. So real quick, I'm going to go ahead and add my cover and the spine and the back. Since I know those are going there, I'm going to go ahead and get these glued down. This piece is my cover piece. And you can see I inked it as well, so it would kind of blend in. Look how cute this is. I just love this. So precious. And now I'm going to turn it on its side so you can see me do the spine as well. Need that little guy in there. Just like so. And I love how that's going to continue like that. The back's going to be a little bit different, but rarely do you look at the back of the album anyway, right? So we'll be all right. Add our little back on. Love that. Now, while I was inking, I thought I'm going to save a little camera time because it's a lot of steps doing all that inking and stuff. So here's what I did. I inked everything on the inside. You can see all the areas are inked. Don't worry what it looks like. It'll look better. And I went ahead and cut pages to cover these pages with. Now you need four sheets for each signature. So each one of these is a signature. So I needed 12 sheets. So I just went through and cut out what I wanted and I inked everything already to make life easier when we put these down. So now these can go on the pages. So I've got something in mind for the inside cover and the back cover. But for this section here, because this is like a double page layout, I'm going to use this little gate situation. I think this will be cute here like this. They kind of look like a little gate inside of there. So I'm going to glue that straight down. And because I cut that set up twice and I don't really love the back of it for a page, I'm going to do it again. But let me show you what I'm doing. That first little gate is living inside my first flap. This next little gate, I'm gonna turn a couple of pages over and I'm gonna let this one live like this. I say gate, what is this, a fence or a barn door or whatever, I'm gonna let it live like this, okay? So I'm gonna glue this one here. So I got those all put where I want them. Now I'm gonna go back here and put a piece here. Actually, do I wanna open this up? Yeah, I think I'll open it up and work like this, these two pages like this. So let's see what's going there. Maybe these little veggies, these are so cute. These little pages with the vegetables are fresh. I don't know, maybe not there. Maybe let's save this for somewhere else because this one's gonna show when we first open. I think I'm gonna do like this page and this page here. Yep, that looks good. By the way, while I'm doing this, so I told you these pages were six and an eighth wide. I discovered something. If you cut these pages six by eight, they lay in perfect top and bottom. I don't know why, but they do. They lay in perfect. And then you waste no paper. You can get two full pages from one piece of 12 by 12. And that's great because six inches wide is awesome. Anytime we can work with that. Probably should have used some of this old paint page, but I'm not really into that old paint look. So I'm going to stick with the, the floral pages. And I know this one may seem strange because you only see the roof of the house. But if you took a picture, you might be taking one. You know, we might put something up here and it's above in the clouds. I think it'll be cute. All right. So that gets this covered the inside this page let's do this page and i'm going to do it the same oh look i don't have to now i can do kind of a one-off let's do one of these veggies as a one-off i think this will look good don't worry about that i got a plan for that that pattern there you'll love it so there's that one let's open this guy up and do it so these pages are the front and back of each other do you see that and i want to put them in like this because i think they'll be so pretty with the two kind of coordinating with each other Okay, and now this set. I kind of want to do that same thing again. I love that pattern together. Oh, no, this is my inside cover, so I don't need that one. Maybe I want to put this here. And I'm going to go back and see where I'm missing some pages. 
If I'm not mistaken, I think I got all my paper in the right orientation this time. If, if I did, it's a miracle. We're not done yet. I'm sure I'll put something in upside down at some point. But I think at this point, we're looking pretty good. All right, let me show you what my plan is for here. So I didn't think I'd use this paper, this chipped paint, but I think this is gonna be the perfect spot for it. So notice I only inked three sides. I'm gonna make a pocket in this area and I'm gonna use this to do it. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut around this wheel because I think this will make a really neat pocket. Then I'm gonna ink it and glue it down and just let it literally create the inside pocket. So now I'm gonna install this. I'm gonna glue this down, making sure I have my ink edges out because those are gonna be, you know, I want these edges to be inked. This is gonna get covered on this side. And then my pocket is gonna be this guy. Now here's the thing. If you wanted to, you could create some little gusset strips to put under here. I don't see any need for it. I need this pocket to be kind of snug because it's so big. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to glue three sides down. This long side and the bottom side. And that is going to create our pocket. Isn't that cute? I love when the paper kind of goes. Here's what I want to do. And it works. Cute, cute. And now I'll show you how it's a pocket. See that? We'll be able to put some cutesies in there. Love it. Okay. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this back page. So right back here, same process. And I thought of this idea too late to kind of cut my wheels to where this pocket would go this way opposite of the other one. So I'm just going to make it the same as the first one and it'll be just fine. You might be like, why was it too late? Because I'd already cut the paper for somewhere else. <laughs> so I didn't have it where I could cut it in the right orientation. All right, let's do a walkthrough before we decorate. And by the way, these pre-made albums change everything. It just makes life so easy. You need to stash these. You need to just have them in your stash so when it's time to make an album, you grab one and go to town. So check this out. This is easy. <laughs> now we just go in and do all our little embellishments. And our album looks like we used chipboard and did all of that to make it happen and we didn't we just covered the album and look how cute now i got lots of ideas for decorating it so let's go to that so the other thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to add these corner angles from tim holtz i'm adding the kind of rustic silver ones but you get three options in the package and you can see i've already added them here and here but i wanted to show you i even did this one but i wanted to show you how i did it so on the inside I added a little bit of Elizabeth tape here and here. And then on the very inside, you can see I added three glue dots. Now you could use liquid glue. You could use an E6000 would work really well. You might could use art glitter glue. I wouldn't use hot glue because with these metal pieces that typically doesn't work. But here's how I'm doing it. So you want to put the adhesive on and then you want to put this all the way into the corner like this, okay? Now what I did was I finger pressed them first if you can't finger press first, you can get a plier and do that and everything, but I just did a little finger press and then using these little jewelry pliers that have this flat edge here on the inside, I'm going to squeeze this down. These little pliers work really well for this and these guys are on nice and tight and I don't think they're going anywhere, but isn't that the cutest little way to kind of finish off the edges of the book? I think it looks so cool. All right, more decorating. So our next step is making our photo mats and we're gonna be using this cool new stamp set and I'll show you how I did this. Okay, so I have this three by four, five by seven, four by six and eight by 10 option. The eight by 10 is obviously too big, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I've got a three by four piece cut with a mat to go around it. My mat is cut three and a quarter by four and a quarter. I've got a four by six piece cut with a mat to go around it. That mat's four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then I cut a five by seven with a five and a quarter by seven and a quarter mat, okay? Now I made for myself two of these and six of each of these, but let me show you how I'm gonna stamp them. Okay, so I guess I could leave them just like this and probably do the stamping. I think it will be all right. So I'm doing something that you t that we typically don't do, and that is I'm gonna stamp with my Distress Ink. And the reason for that is I want this to look a little washed out and not perfect. Now, what you do, or what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna do place photo here on each one of these. This is just to show the recipient of this album where to put pictures. If you're keeping this for yourself, or if you're gonna be you know, decorating it with photos yourself, you really don't need this. But this is so good for when you're giving these gifts and people are like, where do you put the pictures? See, this is so good. Okay, 
I'm going to use three by four on this guy, and that tells the people what size photo to put there. That means their three by four photo will cover this whole piece up, but if they want to do a smaller one, they can. No big deal. This one is the four by six, and you can put these anywhere you want them, any way you want them. I just thought it was neat. See how my the ink is not perfect. I thought that would look good. Plus, it would make you want to cover it up. You know what I'm saying? You're going to want to anyway because these words don't make any sense in your album. But see that? And you can go, you can use the 8x10 too if you're making a large one. But I love it. Okay, then I did one more thing. I took my stub punch, the one that looks like a ticket, and I went around the corners like so and just did every corner. Again, this piece is going to get covered up if they put that size photo there. But you and I both know they can put any size photo there. You know, as long as it covers up our text in the middle, you're fine. And that's why I would put this text in the middle. Because if I want to put, you know, just a small photo here, I can. And it would still cover up the text. But I cannot tell you how many times people come in and they look at our albums and they go, well, what do you do with these? If you give somebody an album like this as a gift, they know exactly what to do. All right, let's glue these down. By the way, I'm gluing these straight down. I don't see any reason to pop this up or anything like that. You can if you want. It doesn't hurt anything, but it's going to get a photo on it, so I'm just going to glue it directly down and just let our little mat pick out the side. Now, you'll notice I did not ink them. Let me tell you why I didn't. I'm going to ink them, but I'm going to ink them when I put them together. If this piece were going to show, if this was going to be something that shows forever and this was going to show forever, I would ink them individually. But because you're going to cover this piece up anyway, I'm going to save ink and my hand by inking it all at one time. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Normally, it wouldn't look good. Normally, you'd want to ink them individually. But I'm not going to waste all that time and ink on something we're going to cover up. So instead, I'm just going to take this guy and I'm going to ink them as one piece. This way, the orange gets inked and some ink goes onto our little, our little photo mat and it all kind of matches together, but we're not wasting or doing twice the work. Because if you didn't do it this way, you'd have to do each element, and that would take twice as long. All right, so let me eat these guys up, and I'll show you what we got. So here's all my photo mats. Now I just need to place them into my album. So for this 5 by 7 it's going to cover most of the page, and I only did two of them for the album, and here's the reason. Remember I had this vegetable paper that is super cute, but it's not my favorite page in the book. Won't this look good just like this? I think this will look good right here. And when you put a photo there, it still all matches, but we don't have to do anything with that solid vegetable paper. So this little five by seven piece is gonna go there. We'll put a photo on that one. If you've gotten this far into the video, you're gonna be very happy because I haven't said this yet, but I'm giving this one away. I want one of you guys to win this album. And all you have to do to enter to win is comment below. That's it. Just make a comment. We'll be going through them and randomly pulling a winner, but the comment does have to be about the video, so make sure you say something. Maybe it's, I love this album. Um, I wish I had this album. Thank you for making this video. Whatever you want to comment, and that will be your entry. Look at that. Cool, right? All right, let's do the smaller ones. So I'm thinking I want one of these three by fours up here. I think this would look good to put a photo right there. And don't forget, we have other stuff we're going to add to the album, other things we can put in here to make it super cute. But I'm just going to run through and do all my photo matting first. So let me show you how those turned out. Look at this. So we have a three by four there. We open here, we have a couple of spots. Don't worry, there's more coming, more decorations. And then in here, you can see, and this is nice. Look how many can go here. Love it. These pre made albums. I cannot say enough. Like, this has just been a morning project. Like, this is not, it would have taken me a whole day just to make the album if I was making the album myself. And I put a couple of these in here. I may make a couple more of these for the front, and I can put a five by seven in there too. So we'll see how that goes. All right, next step. Remember how I told you that we got some products in that I didn't get to play with before Christmas in July? This is one of them. I got to play with the barn, but I really didn't get to play with the rest. So look at these little guys. I have decided to take on a project here, okay? I cut out every single one of these. I take that back. That is not true. Shannon <laughs> cut out every single one of these in white cardstock for me, and here's why. I want to color these images to match my album, so I'm going to attempt this and see how it goes. So let me show you. She cut them all out for me. Then she put the little white pieces into this little bag, okay, and told me this is the sheep. So what I'm going to do is like pull each piece out and color it. That way I know they'll match my um, album. Now here's the thing. This is probably overkill, and you could have just done the papers, just picked out papers to match, 
but I just thought this might be a cool way to do it. And since this is the sheep, I probably won't have that much coloring on this one, but the rest of them may have a lot to color. So I'm gonna lay these little guys out. Some of these items I will not even use, like, like little eyeballs and stuff, I may draw my own, but we'll see how this goes. So let me get the picture. So I put this on a sheet so you can see it, all the little pieces, and here's what I did. I went through and I looked at the little sheep and I pulled the colors that are alike, okay? This is all white. This is all the little fleshy tan color. These are black and these are also, these are white right here, so let me move them to the white area. And then the underneath pieces, these two little guys right here are gonna be black. So it's not as hard as it looks. And honestly, for these guys, I think I'm just going to ink this. And what I'm gonna do, I may regret this, but I'm gonna use my ink blending tool I've been using all day and not, not put it in the pad again. Just go around and ink this little guy up he lives on a farm, he's getting dirty, he gets in the dirt. That's the thing about this little sheep. And these are gonna be so precious. And I love it, because it gives me a chance to try out every single one of the dyes. I also love it because Shannon loves to cut these out. She loves it. She did elves for me. I did not get a chance to use the elves either. I was trying to use them for Christmas in July, but she did the elves and they turned out super cute. So this part is gonna be super easy. Also, this sheet, by the way, this die is made where he can go in two different directions. So, um, let me show you that. Do you see here at the bottom, there's another image of him. He can go this way or he can be full bodied. I don't know which way I wanna do him. I kinda like him this way. I may do him this way. All right, now markers. I have all of my markers laying here. I'm gonna move the little sheet by the way, cause you've seen it. Got all my little markers laying here and I'm just gonna run through and find some colors and color this guy. So for this little guy, coloring was easy. I used my ink blending tool. I used one marker called garlic clove and one black. That was easy enough. Now we can assemble him. Um, I, at first I thought I've bitten off more than I can chew, but I gotta be honest, that was super fun. It's almost like playing paper dolls with these guys. It's not hard and it's super fun. Let me find my quick stick. So these little black circles go on first and then you put on the little white pieces that are the whites of his eyes. A little glue around that for these other little guys. And you'll want his little eyes to face in the same direction, I assume. So I got him looking off to the side. This really is like paper dolls. I'm not even joking. All right, let's keep assembling. <laughs> I decided to find the palest shade of pink I got and let's do a little bit of a cheek here and here. And then I'm gonna take my blender pen and just kind of soften that up a little bit more. And then you know I'll probably come back and do some dots and dashes in different places, but he's so cute. I just love how he turned out. All right, that's one. I got a lot to do. Let me bring this up where you can see him. Mine looks a little bit different because I did him sideways, but look how cute he is. Oh my goodness. Let me go make all of them the very same way and we'll get right back together. So I want to show you this. This is the cut apart sheet that comes in the Mente pack. And these are the little pieces that I did. And I want to show you why I did them in white and colored them. Look how I was able to match the colors to the paper pack without having to dig through my stash of paper, if that makes sense. Because just like this chicken is such a good example, do you see how many different colors he is? And having to find that many different pieces of paper would have taken me a while. But just sitting down with my markers and coloring, it took a couple of hours, but it was the most therapeutic. It was really, it really was good. Um, I did them while watching some YouTube videos and look, I got a lot. I did every single dye we have in the store and they look so cute. All right, I'm putting chickens out. And then I've got all of these little pieces too that I can use. Pears, sunflowers, carrots, corn. Just show you all these little pieces. So all that done with markers, okay? And that I think was really cool because I could match everything up. Now real quick before I start decorating, I wanna take this cut apart sheet and there's some pieces I wanna cut. Now you're probably thinking, I don't think those little whimsical pieces really match very well, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put them together. I think it will work. 
I think it will be cute, and I love any excuse to use these little dies because they're so cute, and we're just going to go to town. All right, let me do some fussy cutting here. So here's what my plan is. I only cut a few little things out from that cut apart. I didn't want to cut out the extremely realistic images because I felt like they weren't going to work with what I'm trying to do with these dies as well. So I just cut these little pieces out I thought were super cute. Here's the thing, though. I'm going to kind of treat this as a um, kind of dissected album. Here's what I mean. I'm not going to add a lot to these pages. This looks beautiful, but when you come in here where it's a little plain like this, I think adding even these little images will be super cute because they'll fill in these spaces, but they won't break up the look of the album. What I mean by that is adding something like this here, I don't think really goes that well, but I think giving it its own space does. And I don't know that it would live there, but something like that, probably down here at the bottom. And oh, that's cute. Glue it down and then you can still put the picture behind it. I think that's cute. I think that's where that one's going. So what we're going to do is put some music on this and kind of do the fast forward thing and let you see where I place things. Because that's all I'm going to be doing here is just placing items on this one. And anytime you see me do this, I'm only putting glue on two sides. So when I put it down, the person who puts the photo in can still get their photo underneath but our little tractor will stay in place. So see, all of this is still lifted up. So when the person puts their photo in, they can slide it underneath there to install the photo. All right, let's do it. So I had two pieces I ended up not using. This barn and this little house. That's okay, I can use this somewhere else. I love this little barn, he'll be easy to place. And I might end up using this somewhere in the book, I don't know, but for now I haven't. All right, let's do one more thing. Before I give you a walkthrough of what we just did, let's go back to the stamp set. So let me show you what I did with this. I wanna make some little tabs that are words to kinda go around the album from the stamp set. And I've cut out these pieces that are three quarter inch by two and a quarter. And look at my inky fingers because I already got started on this. So three quarter by two and one quarter. And I'm using the scallop edge of my corner punch. And watch what this does. When you place this guy in just like this and punch is a perfect tab. Isn't that awesome? That's one of those tricks I need to do a separate video on because that's just one of those easy you didn't even know you could get that done with that. And look how easy we make these guys. And we can make them any size we want them, right? And I made several. Let me show you. I wanted to go ahead and get that going. So I made some in this little plaid and some in this. These are the um, scraps, by the way, from the paper packs. You know, whenever I was cutting the full sheets, this is this. Do you see that? Isn't that cool? Okay, let's stamp. Now, I've already loaded all my stamps up, but I'm going to do what I did earlier, which is... I'm gonna stay with the Distress ink, right? Normally we wouldn't, normally we'd use something else, but I want it to kind of have that same brown distressy feel. So this one says favorite memories, and I want it to be a little rugged, and that is, I'll bring it up and show you. I want it to be a little distressed looking, isn't that cute? And I'm gonna run through, so there's that one. Let's do another one over here. Now you get two fonts in this stamp set. By the way, Genevieve of Genevieve Designs, or Jennifer, I should say, of Genevieve Designs, designed this stamp set because she makes albums all the time and these this works perfect with her albums. So you need to go check her out. We'll have a link to her in the description below. And you also need to check out her albums that are available. She has some really cool albums and she does it in a really unique way. You need to go check it out. But she came up with this. She chose the font. She chose the wording. And I think it really works for, you know, she knows what she's doing. She's an album maker. 
So I'm gonna keep stamping all these little guys and then we're gonna place them in the album. Now back to the album and I'll show you what I mean by this. So I'm taking these little tabs, let me get my art glitter glue, and I'm going to glue the backs of them and I'm going to run around and where I have photo mats, I'm going to place these beside the photo mats and they will look like we had them like coming out or whatever, but you see how we have the little special moments there in that cute? Let's do some on the inside here. Let's do favorite memory. That'll be cute right there. And I'm just gonna run through and put these down next to all of my photo mats, either the side of them, the top of them, the inside of them, it doesn't matter. And I'll show you on this one, if I feel like that's too much space down there, like if I don't want it to hang off that much, you can cut some of that off or stamp something else on it. It'll be super cute whichever way you do it. So I'm gonna do a bit more stamping and this is for the side of the album. I thought this would be cute. This is from the stamp set again. This is the little like photo corner rectangle. It's really cute. And I think this will be cute on this little piece of paper. Just like so. And then I'm going to stamp also from the stamp set. Did you notice I changed the ink? By the way, I changed and went to Pinecone from Versaclair. I wanted this to be a little stronger. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use the sentiment that says our story and I'm gonna put it kind of up to the top center. I'm not too worried about everything being super straight and neat because this album just doesn't feel that way to me. And then I'm gonna put the date right here. So whoever gets this can do that on the side of the album. They can write what the date is. So now I'm gonna fussy cut this out. While I'm fussy cutting, I wanna ask you to consider subscribing to the channel. All you gotta do is hit the little red button. It's free. Right beside the red subscribe button, you'll see a little bell. If you click that bell, you can set it to send you notifications, and that way whenever I upload a video, you'll get a notification of your choice, either email or text, and it'll let you know that I have a new video up. All right, so we're ready to put this on. Now, I have gone over and over this cover, <laughs> trying to decide what I wanna do. And I gotta be honest, I don't think I'm gonna add anything to it. I've never done that before. See, isn't that cute? It looks like a little, a little plaque or something on there. Let me see if I can get that to stand up. There we go. I'm gonna glue it straight down. I don't think I've ever let the paper literally 100% do all the work on the front cover, but I'm kind of thinking I am. I, I really, really, really like how the cover of this album turned out, and I think this is really cute right here on the side. I think this will be cute like on your bookshelf or wherever you put it when you put it away. And also, since this is gonna be a prize for someone, if they wanted to add a title or something here, they could. But I gotta be honest, I really like how that turned out with nothing on the front cover. I don't, I've never done it before, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna go with it, because I like it. I had a lot of stuff in mind, and I didn't like the way any of it was looking. So this is the way we're doing it, just like this. All right, so let's do a walkthrough. All right, here we go, the final walkthrough. So the album itself, I just love this album. The pre-made album situation is fantastic. Here's a pocket that we have right here, and then we have photo spots. This guy opens like so. Isn't that awesome? I just love this easy to do album. If you've ever wanted to make an album like this and just didn't know where to start, these pre-made bases are the way to go. Look how cute, I love all the little die cuts. I think they worked really well. And I did mix these guys here in the middle, but I think this works because it kind of feels like part of the paper but I love, love, love how this album turned out. One thing I am noticing is as the pages get thicker, they're a little, they're a little thick here. Let's see if it works if I go back this way. It might work better. I don't know, just play with that a little bit, flip the pages around. I think in my next album, when I make one of these, I may even shorten this page slightly here and round the corners when I do it in the next one, but we'll see. This is the first time I did it, but I really, really love the simplicity of this album and how it turned out. I mean, come on, this is incredible, right? And so easy. All right, this one's going to one lucky winner. How do you enter? You just make a comment below about this album. Maybe you love it, you give it a thumbs up, something about it that you wanna say about it in the comments below, and we'll be picking a random comment to be our winner. Um, we'll let this run for the end of August. So while you're watching the video, you can just enter a comment, and that gets you into the drawing for this guy. And then 
pay attention because we'll contact you from your comment to let you know you won. So you'll want to get with us so we can get your mailing address that way. Don't forget to subscribe and you know the deal. If you make one of these, I want to see it. So head to our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. And if you need some inspiration, there's a bunch there for you. A bunch. So check that out. Until next time, guys. Bye now.